mercy first seen. Exterior, the afternoon sky overhead shimmers with change. Day, January 2009, Inauguration Day. It begins with a majestic galactic golden orb of radiant light glowing in the eastern sky from a portal towards which the earth is moving. The voice of the first African-American president, Bernard Ocala, utters with reverence. If you're like me, you're probably used to seeing our world in a certain light. All that's changed. We have embarked on a journey that will change our nation forever. Exterior Washington, D.C., day continuous. The galactic orb, the sun of all suns, bathes the Washington Monument in splendor. Its light covers the United States Congress, the August buildings along Pennsylvania Avenue, and finally, it envelops the White House. Tourists stop and watch in awe as the unfolding celestial spectacle spreads overhead. Exterior East Coast day continuous. The immense orb grows and emits streams of energy along the eastern seaboard covering New York City and Boston, then all of New England with the patina of its potent golden energy, streaming throughout the universe, subduing the sun with light that is 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Some people will want to turn back, but it's too late for that now. Others will say, we can't do it. But I say it's time to stop destroying ourselves and our country. Exterior St. Louis, Mississippi River, Colorado, day continuous. The St. Louis arch swoons as energy from the orb illumines the sky with gold. A professional baseball game comes to an unexpected halt, and fans stand in awe as new energy, buttery and radiant, overtakes the ballpark in the city, spreading onward. People are frightened, awed, and jubilant. If you have felt afraid or uncertain about change, it's not too late to accept mercy because everything has truly changed. Energy from the orb flows through St. Louis, going up and down the Mississippi, both north and south it flows. The light spreads over the golden cornfields of Iowa and the wheat fields of Kansas, then spills onto the Rocky Mountains and cascades over its majestic peaks. Exterior Grand Canyon West Coast Day Continuous. This golden energy fills the Grand Canyon and baptizes its timeless hues and sublime silence as it rolls on to the Pacific. Rolling up and down the coast, the golden light spreads over Los Angeles, leaving beaches covered with a celestial residue. It flows through the San Joaquin Valley to the Golden Gate Bridge with all its glory evident to all. It seeps through the ageless redwoods, oozes over Mount Shasta, and unfurls its beauty along the rugged Oregon coastline, ceding to nothing in its path. It rolls on in splendor and majesty, blessing every object it touches. It reaches deep into Washington and falls over Mount Rainier before going to embrace the Seattle Needle, an act of completion and wholeness. Interior, White House viewers stand, day, continuous. The look on the faces of people reflects the power this energy brings to America. Standing next to President O'Callum is a proud Jerome White, the black time traveler whose heroism made O'Callum's election possible because he stalked the Imperial Wizard through, the, through decades of racial strife in America. It's time to celebrate President Bernardo O'Callum, the first African American President of the United States. Interior Jerome's Apartment Day, Memphis, Tennessee, 1998. Jerome White, African-American, 30s, the black time traveler, meets his best friend Trey Owens, 40s, Caucasian. Trey opens the black binder for Jerome to study, but Trey notices that he feels uneasy about what's ahead. Are you sure you understand what you're supposed to do? What? Of course. Are you sure you have things set up? Sure, I'm sure. But you have to go back and find the Imperial Wizard. I know where you can find him. It's vital that you find him in the past before he finds you in the future. All right. If he's there, I'll find him and I'll tag him. What's wrong? There are two guys headed this way. You should go now. If they know you're the black time traveler, they know your mission is to track down the struggling Imperial Wizard, he will send assassins to kill you in the present before you can kill him in the past. Come on, man. I'm ready to go. Jerome removes the garnet ring from a wooden box. The stone is set in a dazzling gold blade base and light glimmers through the gem with mysterious beauty. Slipping the ring on, Jerome runs and jumps headlong into a mustard-colored mist and vanishes into thin air. Then an ominous knock interrupts the silence. Trey opens the door and a crow magnon man with a jaw with a, like an anvil stands menacingly outside. 
Behind him is a pale, ghost-like creature dressed in black who steps forward. May we come in? Exterior, Tulsa, Black Wall Street, Day. Tulsa, Oklahoma, May 31st, 1921. It is late morning in the Greenwood District, also known as Black Wall Street, of Tulsa. This is a robust community and the wealthiest black community in the United States. Coloreds are proud of their achievements. Jerome White, 50, steps onto the porch of his spacious home. Daughter Tiffany is at the piano doing scales, while Rose, 50, his wife of 20 years, is in the kitchen cleaning up. Jerome takes a deep breath, showing satisfaction with his life and his community. He picks up the newspaper, whose headline praises a decision the Tulsa Council passed forbidding coloreds or whites from residing on any block where three-fourths or more of the residents were of the other race, making residential segregation mandatory. Running down the middle of the street, Clancy Jenkins can be heard before he reaches the White's house. His arms are flailing and looks as though something terrible happened. Luther got arrested for assaulting a white girl! Rose White, a Creole from Mississippi, who is a beauty with honey-colored skin and green eyes, that hears the commotion and comes onto the porch. Her neighbors also come outside to see what is happening. Jerome and Rose look up and down the block and know it's a bad omen. The Whites in Tulsa intend to lynch the colored boy accused of the assault without a trial. Young black men organize to arm themselves to protect Luther. We've got to go see if we can save him. They're going to lynch that boy. I know. Take this. You may get a shot at him. Rose offers him a pistol. Jerome shows her his bare hands. No. That'll get me killed. I'm here to take down the Imperial Wizard with these, but I might have to save Luther this time. Exterior, Black Wall Street, streets, night. Jerome jumps off the porch and sprints towards downtown in the jail, hoping to get a glimpse of the Imperial Wizard, who is sure to be in the mob that wants to lynch young Luther. The colored scatter as he passes. Carloads of angry whites drive by randomly shooting at coloreds. He races to the jail. White men break into the armory and steal rifles, gasoline, and TNT. Some steal open seated World War I military biplanes from the airfield and strafe Black Wall Street. On the ground, coloreds avoid whites shooting from cars and from overhead. They run from planes with whites firing rifles from above. Watch out! Stay close to the buildings. Go! Jerome dodges the gunfire from above and from the street as he dashes through the burned out shells of buildings and over the bodies lying on the sidewalk and on the street. He passes a half dozen dead men, women and children on his way to the jail. At the edge jail, he hits the fringe of the group of a mob of men wearing white hoods, many of them carrying rifles. The bellicose mob is bloodthirsty. Jerome cannot see the face of the men wearing a, a red hood and a red covering. He runs around the edge of the unruly mob to the rear of the jail building. Jerome climbs up the stairs to the service entrance and walks in the colored entrance. Interior Tulsa Jail Night. Inside the jail, Jerome runs up the second floor where Luther is being held. Are you all right? I, I'm innocent. I, I didn't do nothing to that girl except fall and brush it up against her. Then she starts yelling for no reason, I swear. You'll be all right. There's some fellas coming to help protect you. Jerome passes a cell and runs to a balcony above the square where the sheriff and leader of the mob are in a standoff. Just give us the nigger, sheriff. That's all we came here for. Now you know I'm not going to do that. You boys need to head back to your houses. Forget about taking the law in your own hands. Get, go on. There's no reason for you to be here. My men have orders to shoot if any of you come into this building. Now go home. We came for the nigger, and we ain't leaving without him. Jerome could not make out the identity of the man under the hood. He attempts to get closer without being seen by the sheriff or the mob. He is overhead, looking straight down on the confrontation. The sheriff, a tall man with stooped shoulders, stands on the steps with a shotgun on his hip. Flames from burning homes and businesses lick the evening sky. The sounds of gunshots, the screams of terror, and the roar of airplanes strafing Black Wall Street continue as does the sheriff's standoff with the mob. Jerome sees a small group of coloreds carrying firearms running towards the sheriff. Exterior Tulsa Jail Night. Jerome knows this means potential trouble and hustles across the balcony down the stairs to join the group of colored men in front of the jail by the same time they arrive. We're here to protect Luther, Sheriff. Go home now, all of you. We got the situation under control. They see a lot of to take him out. Explosives go off in the distance. The attacks escalate. Dynamite and Molotov cocktails destroy churches, businesses, and homes. 
Jerome stares at the eyes of the man he believes to be the imperial wizard of the KKK under the hood, but the man turns away as he removes his hood to address the mob. We don't have no gall with them niggas. It's time to go in and get the nigga we came for ourselves. You better get, all of you. Go protect your homes. Get. We'll take care of this. Jerome strains to get a look at the leader's face. The man in the red hood finishes talking to the mob and turns around just as passerby momentarily obscures his face, preventing Jerome from seeing him again. The colored men grab Jerome and pull him away as the sheriff and the deputies close ranks. Leaving, Jerome sees Luther being spirited out the back entrance into a waiting police car that speeds away. On the way home, he sees devastating damage. As Jerome races back, dynamite explodes in horrific flames, and a young girl lays helpless on the street. He scoops her up and runs as a plane drops a Molotov cocktail on the roof of the hospital, forcing the colored patients onto the streets. Jerome arrives at his home. The porch is scorched. He goes inside not knowing what to expect. Rose and Tiffany huddle in the kitchen pantry. He realizes they don't have much time. Rose? You all right? She's ours now. Her folks are gone. For now, honey. We're in here. Did you save Luther? Did you get him? Luther's gonna be okay. I couldn't get to the wizard. I saw him, but I missed him. I don't know who he is. At least you're alive. Thank God. Let's go into the cellar. It's too dangerous to be out on the streets. Jerome takes the girl and his family into the cellar while they spend the night in the darkness. The screams, explosions, and gunfire continue until after sunrise. When they emerge, they have no house left. It is a skeleton of charred wood and smoldering ashes. The entire block has been had devastated. Jerome, Rose, Tiffany, and the little girl join a long line of colored people who have lost everything, leaving <coughs> only with their clothes on their backs. Passing them along the way, wagons loaded with dead bodies, stacked 10 to 15 high, head to the mass graves on the outskirts of town. As they leave Tulsa heading north, we see 40 blocks of devastation under a veil of dark smoke. 1,200 homes burned to the ground, not a single structure standing. Jerome steps out of line and walks over to a mass grave. One wagon after another backs up to the hole and bodies are dumped in. He cries as grave diggers cover the bodies with dirt, one hole after another as far as he can see. Jerome looks at the ring with the beautiful garnet stone that twinkles even in the dim and dusky light of the graveyard. Then Jerome runs and jumps into a yellow mist and vanishes into thin air. Interior, jo Jerome's apartment, day. Memphis, Tennessee, 1998. Jumping back into the present, Jerome skids across the carpet into the dresser where he knocks a statue on the floor. He hears pounding on the door and reorients himself. When he opens the door, an attractive 30-year-old Rose stands in front of him with Trey by her side. I was worried, Jerome, that you weren't coming back. Two goons showed up after you jumped and asked about a black time traveler. That was close. Oh, I'm fine. I made it back, but I didn't get close to him. You gotta find that Imperial Wizard. You have guys that are tracking you in real time, as in right now. In addition to the people who want to kill you in the past. I came close. It was the right time, and the place was right. I just missed seeing him by that much. And you just missed being killed here. Because that's what's going to happen if you aren't careful. These near brushes work in their favor. I don't want to lose you in one of these jumps. I have plans for us. You do? Yeah, I do. Newspaper reports from that era say 20 houses were burned to the ground by colored rioters, and 30 people died, mostly colored killing coloreds. Couldn't you stop it? No! That's not even close to what happened. There was nothing I could do. The wizard was right there. But it was devastating, man. Well, I can still find the times where you can find him, but you're, you're the one taking the risk. We can still make it work. I don't know how much time is left. I'm the expert at jumping. You're, well, you're the... Chairman of the History Department. The Navigator. Don't forget that. Okay, Dr. Trey, why don't you navigate your way out of this, that door so I can debrief with my lovely Rose? I missed you, Romeo. Trey leaves the apartment and does not notice the sedan parked on the street across from the building. Behind the wheel is the man with the iron jaw and the unfriendly ghost-like creature who paid him a visit several days earlier. Okay.